Hello guys, Chris P here and welcome back to another video. In this one, my friends, we're going to be testing the top 10 most played games on Steam in the GeForce RTX 3050. This one is the Gigabyte Eagle model of the card. It requires an 8-pin power connector. It's a pretty basic designed cooler and one of the cheapest versions of the 3050. You've got the ports right there if you're interested in that. And the 3050 being the entry-level GPU from the RTX 30 series, it's actually pretty adequate for the games that we're about to play today because most of them are actually esports titles or easier to run titles and that's where it shines a lot. It can still play a lot of AAA titles as you've probably seen in my uh, full review of it but today I think it will perform really really well in everything that we throw at it. So let's install it in the system and see it playing some games shall we? And the GPU is now installed GeForce RTX 3050 showing up there in MSI after burner along with the latest NVIDIA drivers 5.16.59 at the time of recording this video. I'm not overclocking the card and it's actually quite toasty already even on idle because it is 34 degrees Celsius inside of my room and it's it's extremely hot guys, okay? But it won't throttle or anything so it's fine, all right? Uh, over in Tech Power Up's GPUs you can check out all of the GPU specs. It has 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, 2560 CUDA cores and it's released this year in 2020. Over on the left, we're pairing it with a Ryzen 9 5900X and 32 gigabytes of RAM to avoid CPU bottlenecks and stuff like that. But you should get around the same FPS in the games that we're testing today if you pair it with like a Ryzen 5 5600, for example, or an i5 12400F. Let's get to the first game and actually let's go over all of the games right now. So first up is CSGO, as usual in first place. Second place belongs to Dota 2, then it's Lost Ark, PUBG, Apex Legends, Monster Hunter Rise, Team Fortress 2, Grand Theft Auto 5, Ark Survival Evolved, and Rust. All right, first up we got CSGO, super CPU bound. We're actually playing this time at 1080p using high settings with four times MSAA. Most people probably won't use the high settings, but the 3050 is strong enough to handle it. All right, the match just started. Let's go ahead and win this thing, shall we? This is buttery smooth, even on high settings, to be expected, guys, because, well, it's a 3050. <laughs> it performs like what? A GTX 1070 or 1660 Ti and in a game like CSGO of course those cards don't have any problem running it. There are so many AFK people. Are they still waiting on those new crates to drop? I think that's what's happening here. Oh, oh that guy. I, I didn't kill that one. Uh, maybe there's another one here. Yep. There. Hello buddy. How's it going? Why are they missing everything guys? <laughs> what the heck is happening? Oh no 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 no. Buddy buddy buddy. Oh come on. Okay all Although this is super smooth, obviously, and actually good for like a 360 hertz monitor, I would still choose to play on low settings because there is way less input lag if you use the low settings. And that's all because whenever you are GPU bound in CSGO and like Valorant as well, damn, what the heck, bot? <laughs> um, it, it runs. That's that was terrible. Uh, it tends to run with a lot of input lag. Okay, that's actually what uh, nvidia reflex does it reduces the gpu usage by a little bit it keeps it at around like 97 96 percent sometimes uh and uh yeah you get less input lag because of it that guy is not afk uh, that's that's a bot of course bots always kill me dude they're the best players in csgo they're cheaters of course they have aim bots, right oh wow that was a nice shot see that see that guys that's what i'm talking about the bots are the best all right, that was a good shot as well. Oh, hello. <laughs> it's time to rush B, B90. Let's go. We're actually not rushing B. But <laughs> and that took me way too long to kill that guy with this gun. All right, anyways, uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. So even though it has input lag, if you really want to play... Jesus, that was close. With uh, the, the the highest settings, you can just lock the FPS to like 250. And it's going to be pretty damn good and smooth. See, guys, this is why I said in the intro that the, the 3050 was going to deliver an amazing experience in these games. Because in esports titles, even if you crank the settings up... Uh, it will do an amazing job. High refresh rate experience at 1080p resolution. All right, imagine you are with a scout or an AWP. Throw a smoke there in the middle. 
zoom in to the other guys. Yeah, it gets like 160, 150 FPS minimum, so maybe locking it to 144 is actually the best choice. Dota 2 is next. It seems like we just missed the team fight because people are dead. That's a bit of a bummer, but let's go over the settings. We're playing at 1080p or testing it at 1080p. I'm watching a game here. Ultra settings. The game is kept to 240 frames and we're using the DirectX 11 API because Vulkan actually stutters a bit. It was probably loading some shaders or something like that. That's what Vulcan does and uh, yeah it was a bit stuttery this is way smoother although slightly slower maybe or at least the GPU usage is not always at 99% unless there is a team fight happening in that case it will drop your FPS to like 180 minimum which is obviously buttery smooth still <laughs> but as you can see I'm not sure if it is actually kept to 240 can you actually get 240 because Look at that, it's not, nothing is happening here and it's still not at 240. And I doubt it's the 5900X that can't really get more than 230 FPS in this game. So um, yeah, basically we are engine limited or game FPS cap limited. Oh yes, this is exactly what I want to see, a team fight with tons of effects. 170s, 150, 130s, 120s, okay. That is pretty intensive, holy! But, of course, no, not a problem for the 3050 still. It still can provide a high refresh rate experience, even at maximum settings under the worst case scenarios in Dota 2, which is very, very good and not impressive whatsoever because this is another very old title and very easy to run title as well. So I don't think we need to wait for another team fight to break out. We've seen pretty much everything. When nothing is happening, you get 200 plus. When a team fight breaks out with all of the people in the server basically it drops to like 120s and now it's lost arc in directx 11 1080p resolution using very high settings without motion blur because well it's motion blur that's awful <laughs> and we're just gonna run around here for a little bit try to to fight these things here uh, as you can see by the frame time graph the game is not really the most stable thing in the world it stutters quite a bit especially in new areas and it's not the 3050, by the way, it's just how the game runs. This is not the most intensive area also, <laughs> but I, I just don't really play the game, so I don't really have a, a good spot to benchmark it yet, at least. Uh, so we're just here running around doing some random things. And the city area is also a little bit less intensive than this. I'm surprised to see that the GPU usage is actually up there. It's, it's maxed out in this game. Wait, do I have 48 healing potions? I do, what the heck? How do I have so many of them? Yeah, now with these trees, it drops again to the 180s. Whenever there are trees in the screen, it's a little bit more intensive than uh, the city itself, it gets like 200, 210 FPS uh, outside of these rural areas, I guess. Look at that. Yep, 220s almost. So yeah, that's it for Lost Ark. It's a really basic benchmark run that I have here. But this is what you're going to see at the beginning of the game. And I mean, it shouldn't really drop all that much in dungeons and stuff like that. Maybe like 100 FPS or so, but it should still be a super smooth and playable experience, obviously. Now we're playing Death Simulator PUBG, 1080p resolution, ultra settings, 100% render scaling, DirectX 11. DirectX 11 in this game also has a lot less stuttering issues than DirectX 12. It's more stable, so I prefer to use this API. As you can see, we're fully GPU bound here in PUBG. We're actually... Uh, Level 500 people are everywhere. <laughs> We're actually playing Team Deathmatch and this map is one of the most intensive ones in this mode at least. Because it has a lot of grass and uh, details. Level 500 guy again. It's very fair. Let's let's give PUBG that. That's a very, very fair game. <laughs> it puts you against people your own rank and skill. For sure. <laughs> I'm so scared right now. I don't even see the guys. Jeez, okay. All right, hello. Do you do you see anything? Let's go with these guys here, actually. This is super smooth, by the way. Doesn't stutter for some reason. Sometimes in some seasons it will stutter a bit, but, but not in this one, apparently. Pretty damn good. I'm so sorry, guys. I can't, for the life of me, have good gameplay in PUBG. It's just so damn annoying. I'm hearing some shots in this direction. Hopefully they don't have the headphones to hear the steps and stuff. 
there he is. All right, finally got one. There's another one there in the middle of nowhere. Uh, wait, he's probably gonna kill me now. <laughs> but hey, you're probably gonna do a lot better job than me. We actually killed a level 500 guy. I can't believe this. Um, and with 3050, this is definitely all you need. I don't even think that you need uh, 100 plus FPS or a high refresh rate experience in PUBG because it's a slower paced title. Unless you're playing with level 500 people, then it's kind of fast paced. It's gonna end soon, or very fast at least. <laughs> Got another one there, that's nice. Apex Legends is next. We're playing at 1080p using maximum settings aside from this one, which introduces some stuttering issues. And it's looking really good and it's running fantastic here on the 3050, as you can see. Not a super high refresh rate experience, but it definitely feels very smooth and very responsive because it has NVIDIA Reflex enabled in this game. So let's go here. Uh, oh, there's a guy there actually. Ooh, okay, wait a second. All right, let's just grab some weapons. There's the guy. Come on. There we go. He's down. We're actually playing against squads, I think. I got a ton of uh, lag here, actually. It's probably ping. Yes, it is. What is happening to my internet today? Oh, man, come on. Please, don't do this to me, internet. All right, we're back at it again, guys. Brawlers after us. Damn it. It's okay. Please give me some shields around here. Come on. I really want that. Damn it. Stop. <laughs> no, come on. Oh, my God. Stop coming for me, please. Oh, my. Seriously. I don't have bullets anymore. Are there more of you? Yes, okay. Oh my, are you kidding me? <laughs> what the hell? Stop! Okay, well, at least we're evolving our shield, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, no, 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 no. All right, they drop some ammo sometimes. And items, that's okay. What the heck? Dude! Stop, I am probably gonna die if I stay here, so we're just gonna go now. Okay, I'm gonna throw my ultimate right here. It's a grassy area, so it actually drops our FPS a little bit. And on top of that, we now have tons of explosions and some smoke effects as well. And, okay, it does drop from 60 FPS in worst case scenario, but I don't think that's a problem because it happens rarely and uh, it doesn't really drop too much. Oh, 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 hello there. Hello. Okay, one down. Where are your friends? There's one of them. Come on. Wait, I'm gonna use this. Ah, almost, almost, almost. All right, guys, this is it. Come on. The shotgun will have to do. Not really. All right, that, that was good enough at least. 100 FPS average. Really nice. Monster Hunter Rise. And we're actually playing the Sunbreak demo here because... Well, it's free and it runs the same as the game itself. So high settings, 1080p resolution. And actually what I found was that on high settings, it runs at 150% resolution scale, which is weird. But this game is super easy to run. So we're going to roll with that anyways. Yeah, it actually asks for a GT 1030 DDR4 as a minimum requirement, guys. Yeah, that GPU completely sucks. So no wonder the 3050 is doing an amazing job job in this game. You don't even need 100 FPS and it's getting that, so that's that's awesome. Hello, dear dragon. This is a very beasty one, I guess. Uh, and this map is also a little bit intensive, I guess, because it has a lot of vegetation, so yeah, there's that as well. Now, the game actually released on Switch first, so that's probably why it lacks a lot of, like, contrast on the graphics and ambient occlusion and stuff like that. It's not a very visually appealing game. Yeah, it's it's nothing impressive in terms of the graphics or even performance to be honest because it's getting around the same FPS just slightly higher than Apex Legends at max settings almost and it looks way worse. Of course, it's also running at a higher internal res resolution, but still. And now it's Team Fortress 2. We're getting a thousand FPS here. This is probably the least intensive title so far. 1080p using the highest settings, four times MSAA. You know what? I'm <laughs> Inside of these events here, it gets almost a thousand FPS sometimes. <laughs> 500 FPS. Now, of course, GPU usage is still not maxed out. It's at 30-something percent. So if we did have uh, another faster CPU, we could actually extract a little bit higher FPS. Oh, hello. Oi, Come on. Where is he? All right, we got him. We got him. How's it going, guys? <laughs> 
Come over here, please. How's it going? All good? <laughs> Why are these guys not shooting at me? I don't get it. <laughs> okay, let's move away from here now. Now, I I know it's kind of stupid to be testing Team Fortress 2, but you know, it's uh, in the top 10 list. So, well, we, we gotta test it out. <laughs> it's obviously very playable and smooth and good even for a 360 hertz monitor. Let's see Jack in GTA 5 now. 1080p resolution, DirectX 11, maximum settings aside from MSAA and TA listing. This is it. And over in the advanced graphics, everything is turned off because I really don't think you should utilize those settings. They don't really provide much visual fidelity improvements and they are super, super intensive. Now, using these settings, as you can see, we're getting very high FPS actually. I was expecting a little bit slower performance coming from the RTX 3050 here, um, but yes, it, it can actually play this game on ultra settings above 100 FPS almost all of the time. When we get to Jack's Hill is where obviously it's gonna get way more intensive because the grass quality is on ultra here. And we're not gonna hit anybody here, okay? We're not it's not gonna happen all right the, the trash can doesn't really count okay let's go all right you know what all i need is a car with better brakes than the ones that i use <gasps> well we only hit one person more or less <laughs> um but you know what everybody kills people in gta 5 it's fine we we aren't doing it on purpose so that's what matters all right it has a little bit of motion blur as well with these settings that's why i usually don't use post effects on ultra i prefer to keep it on normal uh, but well this is how i want to test this gpu out that was amazing actually and it also has some depth of field which i don't really like but hey if you enjoy that setting uh, it is enabled here and it can handle it just fine hi jack how's it going yes yeah, 60s doesn't drop from 60 fps so it's gonna be a really solid experience here nice we only hit bob not rex there and he's dead so we can move along to the next game now arc survival evolved is next 1080p high settings preset i just changed the resolution scale bumped it up to the maximum i disabled light bloom because i hate that effect here in this game it looks terrible to me oh boy this game is just awesome you know it, it recreates the dinosaur world jurassic world so well <laughs> anyways guys it's dropping from 60 fps already uh, and that's because we are in the middle of a big forest and that's obviously very intensive the game also stutters a bit especially loading in new areas and stuff because it's based on the unreal engine and th those games tend to stutter a bit actually pubg was super well optimized this season but sometimes it also stutters um do i not die or do i die if i fall from here I don't. Ah, that's that's awesome to know. All right, perfect stuff. Outside of the big forest, it gets 60 FPS. Still drops though. That's interesting. I was expecting it to be a little bit smoother here, but still, in a game like Ark Survival Evolved, uh, this is not like a first-person shooter. Or maybe it is. <laughs> but I think for this type of survival game, you don't really need 60 plus all of the time. And I'd be super happy with 60 FPS on average here. Uh, uh, stop, stop bothering this guy. Well, he doesn't even care, actually. Interesting. Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. They're so cute and so annoying. Leave me alone. Shut up. We can cover more ground like this and stutter more and stuff. Oh, swamp areas. They're also pretty intensive. Dropping into the mid-50s at times, as you can see. And finally, it's Rust, a personal favorite of mine. 1080p resolution using highest settings here, aside from this one, which uh, if you increase that to the maximum, it runs out of VRAM and it starts stuttering, so I don't recommend that. And Video DLSS is set to max quality, which makes it look really good in this game. And these are the settings right here. So not complete maxed out settings, but pretty close, and it's looking fantastic here, aside from that that blinking <laughs> mess there, which I think is caused by DLSS at the distance, but it's a minor issue there in the visual department and uh, I would definitely utilize these settings. You know what, when I first launched the game and was applying the settings, I couldn't believe DLSS was enabled because this looks really good. If I stop here so YouTube compression doesn't mess it up, I mean, this, this looks like native 1080p to me, and I'm using a 4K monitor, guys. It looks better than some previous games that we tested so far today, 
at native 1080p and this is using the LSS so it's actually upscaling from a smaller resolution or lower resolution now this area is pretty intensive as you can see it's dropping into the 70s and 80s at times there's Roach right there and I see yeah there's a guy near Roach <laughs> The more you play this game, the less it will stutter. So after like 15, 20 minutes of gameplay, it's going to be smooth. He saw me. <laughs> I am just a new guy. Please. Uh, what a waste of bullets. Look at that RAM usage, guys. Isn't that insane? Like Rust is so RAM hungry. I think last time that I tested it, it was using 16 gigabytes. Now it's using 18 18 freaking gigabytes of RAM utilization. That's crazy. You, you, you actually need a lot of RAM if you want to play <laughs> at high settings or with these settings, which is not needed, to be honest. A lot of people will play on low so they can spot people better and stuff. But yeah, I, I, I like my graphics to be good whenever I, I can. And with the 3050, it seems like you definitely can utilize some high settings in this game. It will look beautiful and it will play amazingly well with a little bit of stuttering though. And that's been it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I think there is nothing left to say about the 3050 here. It does a really, really amazing job in the top 10 most played games on Steam, which to be honest are older titles mostly and esports titles and just not really that intensive titles overall. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll catch you guys in the next one very soon. I'll also leave the full review down below in the description if you want to take a look at that and I'll catch you in the next one very soon. Love you all. Bye-bye.